I know that Dan and I, you know, Dan has deep mother wounds. I have deep father wounds. What steps can we do through this behold? How will it help us deal with that? Mm-hmm. You know, how, how can those of us who have those kind of wounds find yeah. you? Yeah, I think, you know, I think all of us do. I, like we said, you know, our parents, and like we said, this is just being honest of the places where um, they just couldn't be everything to us at all times. And and sometimes it was a lot more grievous than that. But even in that, and and those things, they, they reflect our heart. They reflect in our hearts. As the catechism says that our mother and our father are the first examples of God to us. And so many times we we adapt to a vision of God that comes through parents when they're not perfect and, and just life. And maybe it's, you know, other things, other ha- things happening in our families. And I think just being honest about those things and allowing the emotions to come to the surface. And like you said, Stephanie, really beautiful. That was a belief that you held about yourself. And it wasn't until you were in a safe enough place to that, for that belief to come to the surface where then you could bring it to the Lord and you find that he didn't mock you. He didn't shame you. He didn't say what's wrong with you. He just received that tender belief that you have about yourself. And then he revealed the truth to you. Mm -hmm. And this is really all the Lord is asking of us to do is he's bringing us, wants to bring us to a safe place because it's security that allows these things to come to the surface. And then as we allow this to come to the altar of our hearts, the Lord meets us with the truth. And, you know, we can honor our mother and father and the people in our life and our spouses and member family. We can honor them as we're supposed to. We're supposed to honor the people in our life. And 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 we can also be honest as well. Just like that's what happens when you go to confession. We, we bring ourselves as a beloved son or beloved daughter. And we're also honest in the places where we, our love has been ruptured and where we've hurt people, where we've hurt God, we've hurt ourselves. And so I think the journey of honesty, which is the journey of humility, which is living in reality, <laughs> just living in the truth of like, Lord, I this happened to me, you know, this is something I'm experiencing. Can you please reveal to me what I'm believing about myself? Because those are many times the most powerful triggers of of what I'm believing myself about myself in a certain situation. And then Lord, what is the truth? Because that's really the the sticking points in our life of, you know, every wound has a message. And Mm -hmm. so it's like porcupine quills, you know, it's like the porcupine quills and they have a barb on the end and the barb is the message also. So sometimes it gets stuck in there. And so the Lord would like to speak the truth to us because I know for me in just areas of, of just major trauma in my own life, one of the many things I've learned along the way is that the people that hurt me are just people and they're not monsters and they're, they're broken mm-hmm. like me. And like you said, so beautifully hurt people, hurt people. And it's not excusing sin. It's not excusing the need for justice to be restored. All that will be taken care of. But really, at the end, what you see, there's their people, too, that are loved by God. And as the catechism says, that when the Holy Spirit purifies our hearts, it turns the pain into intercession. And that is something the enemy can't touch, the, the humility, the love, the obedience, the truth. Like, that is that is a powerful force of transformation, and that's the life of Christ, and that's what he's bringing to birth in us. You know, what's so incredible, po- incredibly powerful when you talk about the when the Lord brings us to that place and heals us and we can then lean into the power of intercession is one of the prayers that, that, um, that we use is Lord, as I forgive this person, which takes so much courage. Yes. It takes incredible courage to even go there to even admit the things that have happened or that we've done or been done to us or whatever. Mm -hmm that as we do that and we allow the Lord to heal us, then we can ask him to turn all curses into blessings, Amen. to restore them a hundredfold. Yes. And then when we set them free, we're free. Yes. And the Lord can then move. Then, yes. then we're not withholding the grace that he wants to perhaps move through us through that prayer to that other yes. person mm-hmm. and to be able to genuinely ask for somebody who's hurt us to be healed Mm-hmm. For them to be restored, to be saved, to be to mm-hmm. be sanctified, for them to become great saints is an extraordinary gift. And it is possible, but it does yes. take um, some careful yeah. walking through with, yes. with souls that will help us mm-hmm. walk through those places because it's sacred ground. It and it, it just has to be navigated so carefully. That's true. Yeah. And it takes time and that's okay. It's a process and that it's, it's okay that it does. And it's true. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dan, what were we going to say? No, I, I just, uh, my heart aches for everyone listening mm. Be- because I know what it feels like. Cause I'm even in this place in my own life. 
because I came out of a background of abuse. Mm -hmm. I came out of a, a, an environment where there are a bunch of caskets of siblings and, and mm -hmm. niece and, mm -hmm. you know, from, from uh, drug abuse and from uh, neglect and all of that, that no matter where you are and, and no matter what the junk is, it's back to what you said earlier, the pathway to God is through in and through those things. Mm -hmm. And, and the, that it, like, I know that I have healing in, ahead of me. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know that I understand it completely, but I, there is something brewing in me. It's mm -hmm. been there for a while and stuff. I just know that once I face it, wow, is it going to be difficult, you know? Mm -hmm. But I also know enough because I've been through it enough that on the other side is a deeper kind of love that I never thought I could know. Mm. a deeper mm. kind of joy that I never mm -hmm. thought I could know, a deeper kind of self-giving, a deeper kind of peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just want this in this webinar, I want everyone listening and listening to Sister Miriam and to Stephanie, I think I pray to God you hear in us that there's freedom yes. on the other side of that pain. Mm -hmm. and But God is calling you to, to face it, mm -hmm. to move into it, to find him there, to allow him to heal you. And then you will become a force for healing in the world. You will mm -hmm. become a deeper, more authentic disciple of his. Mm -hmm. You will be changed and the world will change around you. You know, mm -hmm. even more than that, you know, my, our, our daughter, um, she so inspired me when she said this, but as she was getting ready to um, prepare for marriage, she, something came up you know, something came mm -hmm. up in her. And we know that when that anxiety starts to rise, it's this mm -hmm. indication that something needs to be healed and brought forth. And I was so um, inspired by her in her words. And she said, mom, I have a responsibility for my future, to my future husband and mm -hmm. to whoever the Lord entrusts me with to mm -hmm. go receive healing. Mm -hmm. and the responsibility to them not mm -hmm. just to yourself, but to them. Yes. And I think that's the other thing is that mm -hmm. the Lord has created all, you know, every person is unrepeatable. They're beautiful. They have this particular mission that only they can complete, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that is. And I just, you know, I ache for those who are struggling. I yeah. want them to step into what the Lord is asking of them to come to that healing because mm -hmm. the Lord needs them. Mm -hmm. We need healed people. We need, we need to walk with one another and help others to find their healing yeah. and we need healed priests. Mm. We need healed sisters. I know that you do mm -hmm. a lot of work in that area mm -hmm. um, because I think it's interesting to talk about mother wounds and father wounds and, I think we all have a collective mother wound, yeah. we have a collective father wound, and mm -hmm. it shows up in so many ways, um, even in our Holy Mother Church. And mm -hmm. we just need um, to encourage one another to seek. We have a responsibility to ourselves, to, to those mm -hmm. in our immediate family, but to the extended Holy Mother Church, because those graces, our sin is never isolated our brokenness yeah. is never isolated and yeah. we need to, to allow that to happen so that the lord's grace can just flow freely mm -hmm. oh, this that is so true and you know like mother Teresa said you know we forgot we belong to each other mm -hmm. <laughs> and we we profoundly affect each other and there is no such thing as a private sin but there's no such thing as a private grace either and i think right. i think that's one of the things we will be shocked at is when we see god face to face we enter into heaven how tightly interwoven we all were mm -hmm. and we all are that we don't even that we don't even realize it and i think i, I love what you're saying there both of you and I, I think that the truth is that we don't go into these places alone and yeah. that jesus is the one who's inviting us and and like you said down so beautifully like you can tell the holy spirit's bringing something to the surface of your heart and and that's all we need to do is go to the Holy Spirit and just ask, like, Holy Spirit, what are you doing? Like, what's what's happening in my heart? And and the Lord goes with us. And that that's, you know, trauma therapists say that, you know, for all of us have, you know, these wounds, you know, these wounds filled with pain. But almost surrounding every single wound we have usually is a secondary wound of having nobody safe to tell it to. Mm -hmm. So by the time since we were little, even till now, we had these wounds that are surrounded in these areas of isolation 
and fragmentation. And when we can in safety and on communion, bring that to the Lord and to people who love us, people who are going to be with us, who will not leave us, who will not forsake us, who see God in us and who know us, then that gives us safety. That's the covenant that gives us safety for everything to come out. And you know, it's so much more than just managing. We're not here to manage our wounds. And you know, Christianity is not sin management. It's God forbid, if it's Christianity is sin management, we are the most pitiable of all people, you know, but it's a pretty boring religion. Isn't it? it is. And it, but Christianity is a complete transformation unto glory. Mm-hmm. So I think really like question is I was at a, I'm a recovering addict. And many years ago, I was at a meeting and this woman who was having a hard time staying sober, just came to the meeting one day and she just came in all these various conditions and we're never really sure what she was going to show up as. And she came to the meeting one day and she had a huge epiphany and she said, you know what? She's like, I realize I've been doing this sobriety thing all wrong. She's like, up until this point, I've been asking myself, what is the bare minimum I need to do to stay sober? And she's like, I realize the question I need to ask is not that, but how free do I want to be? Right. How free do I want to be? And as us as Christians, there's no limit to that. There's Mm -hmm. no limit to how free we can be in the Lord. There's no limit because he is infinite and because in his heart is infinite. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to, he wants to draw us into the depths of his heart, into the depths of freedom and into liberating others as long as we're in this earth. And of course, even afterwards uh, to advance his kingdom. So I,